probably the lowest despicable individual that you could ever encounter in your life. I think it was a heinous crime. Pompous ass. I think everybody was astonished. I think he's inhuman. I think he was an immoral person. I think he's guilty. Idiot. I guess everybody thought that it just wouldn't happen. When he knows he manipulated all of these folks. I think he ended up screwing up his family life. I think he was guilty. Scumbag would be a good one. I, I don't know how a human being could do that to his wife, to his children, to his family. I think he's a person with no morals. Bastard. And I think, I think he should be ex executed, absolutely. Not only should he fry, but she should too. On the evening of September 7, 1984, Maria Marshall, a devoted wife and mother of three, was brutally murdered. Convicted of conspiracy to commit murder, her husband, Robert Marshall, spent the past 18 years on death row in New Jersey State Prison in Trenton, New Jersey. During those 18 years, Marshall declined all requests for on-camera interviews until now. With the final appeal to spare his life on the horizon, Robert Marshall consented to a taped interview which was conducted in the confines of a locked cage within the Trenton State Prison. That night, um, it, it, was, it was almost an unscheduled um, visit to Atlantic City. And I kissed my mother goodbye and I just, and I told her I loved her and and I, I thought the next time I'd see her would be tomorrow morning when she woke me up for school. Marshall uh, was at a night with his wife in Atlantic City gambling and having dinner and uh, when he came back from Atlantic City, depending on what story he told, he either had problems immediately going through the rest stop or the uh, toll booth going north, or he had some problems right from the start. I left the toll plaza and I increased my speed to about 70, and I felt a wobble in one of the tires. It felt like it was coming from the, from the rear. Said to his wife, I've got to pull off and change the tires. She said, for heaven's sakes, whatever you do, don't pull the side of the road because a friend of theirs had been killed about a year before doing exactly that. So the only safe place I could, I could find was uh, this picnic area that came up. In any event, he allegedly pulled in this dark area to check the tire. Didn't want to stop on the ramp because if I had to change the tire, I'd be in an incline. So I made a turn into the picnic area and stopped a few feet from the, the uh, throughway. Got out of the car, was bent over the tire that was nearly flat. Somebody hit him on the head. The instant before I was struck, I heard her cry out, oh my God. He woke up, his wife was dead. I woke up in a pool of blood and found her lying across the front seat. He had uh, uh, an injury. Um, I pointed out that I think it was seven stitches to close the injury. I tried to um, get her to respond to my voice. She didn't move. We finally flagged down a car, they called the police, and they came to the scene. Mrs. Marshall was slumped uh, in the passenger's vehicle. There obviously were two large caliber bullet holes uh, in her back, both of which would have, could have been covered by a 50 cent piece, so they were very close together. I woke up John, brought the two of them in to Robbie's room, and I sat there and I told him what happened. From the time my father came into my room, and woke me up at wee hours in the morning and picked me up, carried me down to my, uh, my brother's room where he was awake, my brother, and was crying. And there was a priest there and he told us what happened. The police showed up and began to question him. He certainly knew that right up the Garden State Parkway from where he pulled into this secluded area was a full service uh, gas station where he could have had any ailment that his car had attended to very easily. I didn't know how far down the road the Roar Rogers was. I just wanted to 
check the tire at the first place where I could safely stop. You know, how many people out there that hear about that actually took the time to go and check out the picnic area, maybe 100 or 200 feet off the shoulder of the road. It's, it's not a, a, a desolate spot. If you looked at a 12 being the top of the tire, at about 2 o'clock in the sidewall, there was a slit in the tire consistent with being made by a knife or a, a dagger of some type. Uh, it, it was not a, something that would be associated with running over something and it would be on the treaded part of the tire. Uh, the story didn't make much sense at that time, but we didn't know whether he was just in shock or maybe the blow on the head might make him have the inability to articulate correctly what the story was. Right there on the spot, they asked him the question, uh, do you have a girlfriend? And he made a mistake. He made a fatal mistake. He lied. He said no. Well, it didn't take the police very long to, to discover that not only did he have a girlfriend, he had a mistress. He was pr prepared to divorce his wife and live with his mistress. And I think that if anything, when you tell one lie to the police, they're suspicious of anything else that you might say. News of Maria Marshall's murder shook the Toms River community, the place the Marshalls had called home for over 20 years. Suddenly, this quiet, beachfront community was immersed in an intricate tale of murder for hire, a salacious love affair, gambling debts, and the model American family gone awry.